Welcome everybody to this virtual coffee of the more clients, more fun. And today we have an amazing and very, very special guest. Uh, her name is C.B. Bowman and she has a lot of things in her plate and a lot of amazing projects that she's leading in an incredible and inspiring way. And we met CB here at More Clients, More Fun. Me and Juan met her about maybe one year ago via LinkedIn. Both of us uh, uh, connect with CB and we start to communicate with CB. We had a couple of meetings on the phone just to know a little bit more about her and her projects. And we went to this amazing conference in Sonoma, the Miku 2017. And we were totally impressed by the quality of people there, the quality of the speakers from people from Google, from Ford, to uh, Jim Coses from uh, the outer, uh, to uh, Frank Wagner of Marshall Goldsmith. Uh, we were totally blown away by the quality of the event and the participants. And since then, we've been collaborating with CB in other projects. And uh, I want to bring her in this uh, virtual coffee here uh, just for. Um, let more people know about uh, what they are doing that is, uh, I think, so impactful and starting with these conferences. So welcome, CB. Thank you, Anna. I, and I want to say to everybody that um, Anna has been so instrumental in my uh, learning about LinkedIn and leading us through a new era of technology and awareness. And I, I'm just so impressed with the work that More Clients, More Fun does. And uh, tell us a little, let's start because I think one of the best ways for people to know you is knowing you through your work that all these projects that you are leading. And uh, I think a great place to start is this conference. Because was the, the being there in person, because yes, we meet people online, it's always great. We can bring people like in Zoom and be communicating today you are through the phone. Sometimes we are face to face. This is always an amazing way of communicating with people and to know people. But there is something still very special. And I think especially today on the online world, to have the opportunity of being in an in-person conference like the MICO that you organize in Sonoma and this year is going to be in, in Colorado. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, what is the intention behind this MICO conference um, and, and tell people about the importance of this event? I would love to, and I just have to warn you that I can talk about this for a century and a day. So. <laughs> I'm so excited about what's going on, what's being developed by uh, the people that surround um, the Association of Corporate Executive Coaches and the MECO Leadership Development Institute. The Institute started in 2016 when the Association of Corporate Executive Coaches Visionary Committee said to me, CB, we need to recognize organizations that are displaying best-in-class behavior with regard to executive coaching. And I said to them, well, are you talking about an award? Because that sort of thing exists. And they said, no, since we're a member of ISO, which we are the only association that's a member of ISO, which is the International Standards Organization, we need something, and, and that's usually seen in manufacturing and consumer products, not in the uh, talent space. Uh, we need something that's going to be of that caliber. So we created the MECO designation. It's not an award. Um, any organization that gets it has to reapply every two years because we know that there is dramatic change at the top of the organization during that period of time. And it's, a, it's an incredible process. Uh, there's two-phase application. 
the first page, the first uh, part of the application just acknowledges general interest. And then the second application is really an in-depth um, document. And organizations have told us that this was an amazing experience for them completing it because it takes a look at where they were, where they are, and the sustainability of what they're doing. And in 2017, we expanded the designation to include not only best-in-class use of executive coaching, but we added in uh, employee enhancement and corporate culture. And we expanded the number of categories that are available for an organization to apply because we want it to be fair across the board. So to wrap it up, the MECO designation is for organizations. MECO Institute is only for organizations who are doing amazing things, to borrow your word, in the leadership development space be it executive coaching, employee enhancement, or, in fact, corporate culture. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm sharing now the screen here that people that are listening and watching to the video, they will be able to see the website for the MICO 2018 Leadership Development Conference. And some of the, these past designees, these companies that got this award about the work that I, they are doing internally with corporate, uh, with coaching and the leadership work that they are doing using coaching as one of their main tools. Uh, companies that got these designations are Ford, uh, uh, Mayo Clinic, Rodan and Fields, L3 Technology, MD Anderson Cancer Center. These are amazing and well-known companies that uh, uh, they got this designation. And one of the things that I truly enjoy last year at the conference is that many the leaders, the coaching leaders in these organizations uh, came to the conference to receive, of course, the, the designation and also to learn. I still, uh, um, it's vivid in my mind that uh, we were in the wonderful dinner that, uh, that you organized for the, where the designees, they receive um, uh, that beautiful glass st uh, statue. And uh, uh, we were in the cocktail hour, we were networking there with amazing people. And I was speaking with a person that I had saw in the conference, but I didn't have the opportunity to speak too much. And I was speaking with him and he was the person from L3, a company that honestly, until that moment, I didn't knew much about and I realized how big they were. And he was not a coach, he's the one that brings coaches in to help that organization to be better. And was incredible the insights for me of that conversation. And he was there the full, t uh, full t conference from the beginning to the end because he was wanting to learn more about how corporate executive coaches can be a help for them. How can you use more of that? And all the other topics that were being discussed on the conference. I think it's an important point to note that First of all, this conference is becoming like the TED Talks of leadership development. And the theme for the conference every year is the future is now. And the purpose of the conference is to bring senior or master level, I don't want to use the word senior because then people tell me I'm talking about their age, right? So we'll say master level coaches with people in organizations that make the decision to hire them and to bring them together so that they can share knowledge and just develop a relationship and, and look to future solutions. So this is very unique in the conference space. The other thing that we do is that we keep it small because we don't want people walking away with a collection of business cards and the concept of let's do lunch. Our theory is to keep it small so that people walk away with more of an opportunity to actually do business. Yeah, and uh, I, I, now I pull it here on screen, uh, the, the one of last year, the, the future of leadership and coaching is here, like you say, and the topic was a lot around neuroscience, 
uh, because it's something so important. And the quality of the speakers was amazing because we had, you had there Jim Cozes, uh, that is an author in the leadership world that most people are very familiar with his best-selling books, and was amazing and interesting to listen to David Peterson from uh, that is the responsible, is the director of executive coaching and leadership at Google. Very interesting speaker and incredible, I say, he really was thought-provoking and um, make us, how do you say, open horizons to new, new ways of seeing coaching. That was very interesting. I also absolutely, Shane Meeker, the, in terms of the story, that is a topic that is quite common nowadays, but he had a very incredible approach uh, to it and uh, shows a lot of his experience in PNG as the corporate storyteller. And Phil Dixon was uh, with the neuroscience. And you had other amazing people there speaking about neuroscience, but that the brain-based leadership is a concept that is so important to understand. And this, and um, w one of the things, because many of the other speakers, maybe they are not so well-known or not representing these big name companies, but the quality of them, because we had many presenters there that are also members of the Association for Corporate and Executive Coaches, the ACEC. And most of the participants are members of this association. And the quality of the people there was truly, truly outstanding. So can you tell us a little bit about the ACEC and how uh, it relates to the MICO? Yes, but first I want to talk to you a little bit about the speakers for this year because I am just so excited. So I'm on a uh, personal goal to, to get executive coaches to change their business model because I think it's a bit archaic, the whole concept of being paid uh, a dollar uh, for every uh, minute that you speak or whatever the fee is that you're charging, the whole concept is that you charge based upon an hourly service, which means that it's either in person or you're using technology today. The problem with this model is that it stems from doctors and lawyers, and it doesn't really apply to today's world, where you have a solo practitioner such as a coach who could have a serious accident or something happen in their family, and all of a sudden they cannot earn an income. Uh, this to me blows my mind because I come out of the corporate world. And I think that actually I know that coaches have to change. If they're at a mastery level, they have to look at bringing and establishing multiple income streams. So the focus this year is on giving attendees enough information to be able to do that. And the focus is on, from the corporate side, measuring success. Now, we are using this word of return on investment, word of return on investment, which because I come out of consumer products, I know that this just, it really doesn't apply to coaching. And I know that I'll get a lot of flack for that. But the reality is when you're dealing with behavior, it's very difficult to isolate return on investment. There's too many factors in it. So we actually have corporate speakers who are hiring the coaches, who are paying the money, who are going to come and speak about how they really view a return on investment. And I think it's going to be shocking information for people. Because they don't measure it the same way that uh, these experts, quote unquote, out there are selling the return on investment as a tool to gain clients. That's really not what's happening. Yeah. And I think one of the, the things that make these conferences special is what you create, this space that brings together the leaders in companies yeah. that know that coaching is important. And yes. these master level executive coaches that serve these companies and they come together in a space where they can exchange ideas. They can learn from each other and, and do business too. Absolutely. 
And this year we added in technology, um, uh, new systems that can help support both sides of the fence. And so one of the things that we did this year in selecting speakers is we selected movers and shakers in our field that people have really heard of. And how is that possible? Because you're using your, their systems, but you don't know who's behind it. So we're really excited uh, in terms of our speakers and how that all relates to the Association of Corporate Executive Coaches, nicknamed ACEC, is because all of our coaches in ACEC, in order to get in the door, you have to be recommended, you have to be sponsored, and you have to be at the mastery level. We do not have any members that are below the mastery level. And so you have to be coaching in the C-suite for at least five to seven years. It doesn't mean that's the only thing that you do, but you have to validate that you have been coaching at that level. And those are, that's the caliber of people that you're talking about that attended last year and who will be there this year. It's people that are master coaches. They really know how, what coaching is and the coaching and consulting at the high level. And they know what working in a corporation is. And they bring that two things together in a very powerful way to help organizations to be better in many levels. Yes, and most of them have had corporate experience walking in, in the shoes of the CEO. And most are not only just coaching in the corporate space, they're coaching in the Fortune 1000 space. Yeah. So it's a really different experience. I know that uh, last year when Jim Cousy's came, after the conference, he came over to me and he said, my God, what an environment. Thank you so much for be allowing me to participate. And I want to tell you something, that the people in the audience challenged what he said. Yeah. So he's not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> they, nope. This is not an audience that's quiet. They speak up. <laughs> it's totally and engage and uh, with that eager to learn more. And uh, it's really uh, extraordinary, all um, that environment that you managed to create that there and because it's a small conference as you said how you can speak with the speakers you can really pick their brain in many different ways and but let's go back to because i think one thing is we can say that uh, like 99 percent of the coach oh, and uh, honestly everybody that i spoke there that were coaches were i master level coaches and interesting thing like you were saying that some of these master level coaches some of them they have the business side very well developed. They have their own uh, organizations and they have their own groups and uh, other coaches in their bench, a team working with them. So, but many others are equally excellent as coaches in terms of what they offer to a company, but they have a practice of coaching. They don't have still a business. If they, like you said in the beginning, if they stop, working by whatever reason it is even if it's a good reason like going out to some downtime in vacations or because something happens that they have to put their attention family wise or their own health their business stops to create income yes. and uh, i love what you are doing especially in this 2018 uh, conference that that is one of the tracks one of the things is helping people to learn from each other, the ones that are there for longer and what works and what doesn't work and helping these coaches changing their business model in a way that is much more sustainable. Yes, yes. And the other thing I just, it sounds like a weird thing to mention, that all of the coaches in ACEC have a high degree of humility. And that's important for our members because these are such high-level coaches. We, we wanted everybody to have a head size that they could fit into the door. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's, it's totally because I, 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 I met most of them. I met them for the first time, and we were just sit chatting, having a conversation. Oh, you work with so so and so company. You work with. Uh, it's like whoa, you are there, and th they were on the same uh, totally grounded. Yes. Uh, and that, that is uh, grounded and willing to share their experience, to l learn from each other. Uh, it's always refreshing to see that. Yes. And, you know, let me, I just want to go back a second and explain to those that are kind enough to listen to this. There is a big organization, an overriding organization called G4. And G4 has under this, stands for a group of four organizations in leadership development. Today, we're talking about the Association of Corporate Executive Coaches, which is ACEC. And you can find us at acec-association.org, which is for individual coaches and coaching cadres. Then we have MECO, which is the MECO Leadership Development Institute. That website is Miko, M E E C O dash institute dot org. And that is for organizations. And there we look at research and we have what we call the stakeholders circle. That is only for organizations because here we look at how do we help organizations better their relationship with coaches better their relationship with employees. We look at sustainability of employees, AKA retention. We look at all of the areas around leadership development. We also have something that's going to be opening called the Youngbloods Tribe, which is for new coaches coming on who really want to be able to develop their path correctly. And we have something called the Brain Trust which is really a transition group of management consultants, HR people, talent management people who want to move squarely into the coaching space at the mastery level. So it's G4 is the family organization under which these organizations exist that are doing remarkable things in the field of leadership development. Because and I love this new uh, the the new uh, child that is the young blood that they see see uh, young uh, young blood because is uh, we cannot rely or because yes we have these amazing master level coaches with an amazing corporate experience usually coaching is not their first career no uh, we're all old Anna <laughs> <laughs> no but an experienced oh, ex young blood. <laughs> yes it's the experience that is there but the reality is that that now coaching people are we have colleges universities that are giving coaching degrees coaching master degrees and uh, the, the, these new coaches don't have the corporate experience of many of the other ones, but they need to learn what is coaching because coaching in the corporate environment is very different than coaching a one on one, a small business owner, or other types of coaching. There is something, how do you say, there is a, a it's almost like we, we know that from one country to another country, there are different cultures. And the, the corporate world is a country in itself with a very yeah, specific, <laughs> very specific awesome. culture. And <laughs> if you don't know their jargon, their language, you, you are going, how do you say, you are going to be noticed not in the way that you want to be noticed. Like, so you don't know what that means? Like, uh, I, I think that's a really good example of how people are using ROI incorrectly. Uh, and, and they're sort of like, you know, blindly drinking the Kool-Aid with people who are trying to force fit the definition into uh, a carrot for them to uh, get involved with. But the people who are part of ACEC understand what ROI is. They know what an SOM is. They know how to read a balance sheet. They know what the competitive frame does to the mindset and behavior of the C-suite. Um, they know what the effects of the boardroom is going to have. They understand business yeah, and yeah. they can go toe to toe with any CEO of 
any Fortune 100 company. That's the difference. And a very important difference indeed. Even for somebody that are not lucky enough to have that background experience. For instance, myself, I have experience in terms of organizations on the university world in yes. Portugal, Spain, and even here. Uh, uh, that is a culture in itself <laughs> that is very peculiar also with their own jargon, their own culture. Now that I'm starting to work more with corporations, I'm learning and having this opportunity of connecting with people of the ACEC that have this experience accelerate my process of learning without any doubt. And it's not to say that we don't have coaches that are working at the top of the house of universities, academic institutions, government agencies, and the such. We do. We do because MD Anderson is part of the University of Texas. So, but what we're talking about is people who can, as I said before, go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top level of an organization. But also, these are people who very well reach out and help people who are not at the top of the organization, who want to get to the top of the organization. Because when, when you apply for a Master Corporate Executive Coach certification through the MECO Institute, you have to show volunteerism. And that volunteerism has to clearly display that you're giving back to whatever community you choose. It, that has to show that you're reaching out and helping somebody or a group of people who are not at the same level as you. And that's what I mean about humility. It's really important. And we monitor our members for that kind of service. And so let me throw you a question. Of, yes. uh, how can corporate executive coaches change the world? Oh, my God. You know, I have a favorite expression, which is, uh, it's a question, actually. And the question is, animal lovers don't hate me for this, because I, I have a, an amazing uh, five-year-old Karen Terrier who rules this house. But the question is, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is bite by bite by bite. And then my other, my favorite tagline, which I created, is the answer is the beginning of the question. So when you combine those two things, we can't change the world. We can make a difference in a specific leader. And as we do that, then we begin to affect the world. Is, is that ripple effect? And I have to add that your perspective and the, the ACC perspective that the, the people there of seeing coaches as that enterprise-wide business partner, <laughs> the, that oh. positioning allows the coach to have more impact in organization. Oh yes, you now you now you're really pressing my help button. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tired of coaches being seen as a throwaway element or as an element that's nice to have when your profits are, you know, high. We need to be seen as enterprise wide business partners. And that is my quote. Mm -hmm. I own that one because, uh, again, you know, we as coaches, we have to do more. We can't, we can't sit on the sidelines and think, okay, I'm just going to coach and I'm going to go in and lead. You've got to show your client that you care about that organization. And that's the only way you're going to keep this client. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you that the newer coaches coming out, they know. They know that the way to the heart of an organization is to become part of that organization, to be an advisor, to look out for the organization, not just go and coach and collect the paycheck. That's not it. Yeah. It's not, otherwise it's like, oh, HR is calling a coach to fix somebody. You are, you are becoming a commodity. It's like, okay, if this, uh, it, and the other one, it's like you are the strategical advisor. You are the, the, the secret sauce that uh, you can come in and really help organization in a macro way. 
Oh, and yes, and that's got to be hollandaise sauce because it's got to be rich. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and one of the things that, and going back to the conference and this year conference that people can find more about if they go to, let me go here, to the Miko uh, M-E-E-C-O dash conference 2018.org um, because one of the things like you said in the beginning you always try to speak about the future that is now here so tell us a little bit about the hot topics you, you already spoke about the importance that is for any coach to develop their business model to have different sources of income to create a more sustainable business so but what are the hot topics are for on the uh, reserve for the lucky, lucky ones that are going to the conference in Colorado this year? So I'm going to change that question a little bit of, <laughs> and, and make it very sort of TV-ish. Um, not necessarily talk about the hot topics, but talk about the topics that are needed. Because there's a big difference. Hot topics are things that everybody is doing, everybody is talking about, and you can get the information anywhere, like neuroscience, um, behavioral coaching. I mean, that's, that's just so old, it's, uh, it's scary. What we are gonna cover are things that are sorely needed. For example, uh, we have the CEO of Leader Amp, who's gonna be speaking. And he is creating, and this is patent, I think it's patent pending, uh, a new product whereby you can measure a client's response, their behavior through your smartphone. I mean, how scary is that? Right. Um, we have Michelle, Dr. Michelle DeVoe Devo talking about, um, you know, an insider's perspective from a corporate view of how do they value coaching very different from what we value. We have a few attorneys speaking. One attorney is going to be speaking about, um, I laugh because it's really funny if you've read any of his work. Uh, he absolutely has an incredible sense of humor. He is uh, an attorney who's turned coach, and he's talking about the things that get companies in trouble. Now, why is that important? Because if you're coaching on one of those subjects, you need to know about this. <laughs> he does it in such a wonderful way. Um, again, it's things that we need to know. We have a, an attorney come in to talk about how do you protect your intellectual property? I mean, coaches are working so hard for so many years, especially those that are seasoned coaches, and they don't realize that they have product, product that can be bottled and sold and licensed, but how do they do that and protect their intellectual property is another story. And then we have, a, talk, well, we do have something that's very, very uh, uh, current, shall we say. Uh, we have a um, uh, Dr. Candida who is going to be talking about um, this whole sexual harassment thing that's going on with um, within the corporate space, and, and it's I'm laughing even though it's not a funny subject, but uh, it's amusing that in, in terms of, you know, it has rippled through our culture to the fact that coaches really need to pay attention to it. And that's what I think is kind of like funny because we have thought about that as remedial coaching. And most senior level coaches don't want to go near remedial coaching because, you know, the person is on the way out. But now it's interesting because you've got some big name people who have been caught in this storm. And what do you do? Do you throw them all out as we've been doing? Do you it's, give them, I was going to say expose them to, but I guess that's the wrong word, <laughs> to a master level coach who can help them see the, what's happened and, and understand what's happened and the repercussions. and you know, is there anything they can do about it? I mean, this has moved into the topic of the day to perhaps a coaching specialization. Yeah. 
and, and is more that because there is lots of sexual harassment training and many of the companies already have some things on the uh, their HR department already have some things around this that cannot be these are not problems that are solvable by a course that they make everybody go to oh. and click up the uh, check the boxes. This oh. is more complex than that. Oh my gosh! You, yes, and you have got to read Janet's latest article because that's the, that's the attorney that's speaking. Um, he he wrote an article that we just put out in the direct mail, and if you don't have it, please email uh, Anna, and she could send it to you or to or email me. And that's exactly what he talks about: is the uh, uselessness of harassment training. It, this is so much greater. Yeah. And, and that is another thing, a great thing of being part of the ACC is that the, uh, the, uh, is the community is the opportunity to come to discount rights to these conferences, uh, quality of the other members, and all the information that uh, uh, the committee's organ and, and the committee's in itself, and all this information that you share that help people to be in the top of their game. Yes. And by the way, we have another attorney speaking, a very, very interesting topic, um, is how do you actually go and entice CEOs to hire you? Now, I know that because we have master level coaches, they've all done it, but you know what? Not so much, because there's a new breed of CEOs coming in. And you may be thinking, and all of your clients exist in the old breed, but if you're not going to be retiring tomorrow, and I do mean tomorrow, January 10th, or whatever the date is, then you really want to hear this. And, and because there, this, uh, because I, and now I'm putting it on screen, I'm really looking forward to listen to this, the optimizing millennium behavior to increase organizational ROI. Uh, is there, all this, all this, all this say we are, uh, these new generations, this new blood that is coming in. And that, I think, is one of our, your genius of starting the Young blo Blood Tribe in terms of coaching. They are going to help the other coaches to relate more with these new generations that are coming. Because they are now the new leaders. They are now the new people. And I can tell you of very seasonal coaches. It's funny, a couple of people that I've been speaking in the last couple of weeks uh, and they are, they're so very seasonal coaches with the incredible track record and incredible experience in big corporations. And when I ask, okay, what is your biggest business development challenge? They say, most of my business in the past came from referral sources mm -hmm. and they kept my book, how do you say, me totally book solid. Now, mm -hmm. most of my referral sources are retiring and I'm not get ready to retire. So I need a new way to do business development. Absolutely. And that's why, Anna, you are speaking about how do you, are you prepared to market? In, in the viral world. The viral world, number one. And number two is that we have a millennial speaking about um, how do you work with millennials? Yes. Because yes. it's very different than what people think. So... Okay, so just to wrap up our wonderful conversation, uh, can you tell how people can connect with you and learn more about all these suites of resources? <laughs> um, sure, they can email me at cb at meco, m e e c o dash institute dot org. Or they could email me at cb at acec association.org. Yeah, and uh, or Google, or uh, if they go to LinkedIn and look for CB Bowman, they will also find you there. Um, and of course, the if somebody can be this. Uh, May in the Miko conference is really an opportunity to take advantage of. So check at Miko M E E C O dash conference 2018.org uh, is going to start uh, in May 21st at this beautiful location, the Stanley Hotel in Est Park, Colorado. I, I 
hopefully I'm pronouncing it okay. It's well, beautiful you location. Close. You were close. It's the Stanley Hotel at Estes Park. Thank you. Uh, Colorado. And the fun thing about that, that is where uh, Stephen Kubrick, I think is how you pronounce it. No, Stephen King, sorry. <laughs> I'm up two different people. Stephen <laughs> King wrote The Shining. And um, he, has a, he had a room there and he wrote it. And they have ghost tours <laughs> at night. And it's in the foothills of the rock. It's at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And uh, we got a phenomenal rate of 169 a night, yeah. uh, which is going up to, I think it's 469 the day after we leave. And, um, you know, a lot of people are booking it for the week and, and bringing their family out. And it's just going to be uh, a fun time for all learning the fun way. I'm looking forward. I will be there this year again. This is one of my F2 Go events. So, um, and uh, looking forward to see you in person there again. So thank you so much for your time today for doing this interview with us. And thank everybody you. that is listening, a pleasure to uh, any question, just email us at questions at moreclientsmorefun.com. Any final words? For our looking, listeners, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you at the conference. And uh, look, I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm humbled that you've taken the time to listen to this. Okay, bye for now, everybody. Bye. More clients, more fun. Once you learn.